I'd like to talk to you about the expression this morning and how we use it. Animation, please. This is the expression. It is 400 microns in length. It has a 50 micron hollow bore, and it's meant to be placed under a flap through a 25 gauge incision. This is the P shunt, as you could see, Wonderful. being placed with an inserter into the anterior chamber, rotated so the spur hits the cornea, and it is absolutely flat on the sclera. You see the P variety has an opening in the posterior segment of the shunt that allows for immediate uh, fluid uh, to leave the anterior chamber. It is then closed and the procedure is over. Let me show you a real world case. This is a patient who look at up at 12 o'clock. You could see a trabeculectomy, but this has failed. His vision is 20-25, the pressure is 37 millimeters of mercury, and he's already had two mitomycin C needlings, both of which have failed. This is the blitz anesthesia technique. We first make a paracentesis, followed by 1% non-preserved lidocaine, and notice how the pupil dilates immediately. We then switch to a 30-gauge needle on the same 1% non-preserved lidocaine to blow up the conjunctiva and tenons. We're working temporally here, avoiding the old trabeculectomy, and these are mitomycin C sponges placed in a large surface area, 0.4 milligrams per cc, and left on the eye for one and a half minutes and irrigated out. We're then making a rectangular flap with a 67 blade, followed by a 57 blade into clear cornea. It's very important that when you make your flap that you try to make it at least half thickness and you clear it right into the cornea so you're able to see the anatomy well. I want to see where the gray line is. We then pre-place our 10 nylon sutures as not to induce astigmatism and manipulate the lens to make sure it moves on the inserter. This is a 25 gauge standard needle and the pearl here is to make sure the intraocular pressure in the chamber is about 20 millimeters of mercury so you're able to clear the cornea nicely and not have hypotony. The inserter is connected to the express. You feel an audible pop and then rotated. It's moved first on its side and then centered. Immediately, you'll see egress of aqueous through the 50 micron hollow bore. And this is how it looks. So you see the fluid flow. And now it's, you have to decide just how much flow you want. We refill the anterior chamber and put slip knots on the 10 nylon so we decide how much flow we want. Ideally, I want flow out the posterior edge of my flap, and I wanted to make sure that this at least occurs when the pressure hits about 15 millimeters of mercury. We then tie the sutures and cut them, and now I want better control in the immediate postoperative period. So this is a releasable suture. This is 10 nylon, half thickness through the cornea. And notice this is real time for the releasable. It's quick. You take a half thickness bite now through your flap to the adjacent sclera, pull it out, and then turn the needle around and go back exactly as you came, half thickness through the cornea, just like this, creating a rectangular knot and you can tie this as tightly as you want. If the pressure is astronomically high, you may want to tie it tighter. If you're dealing with a normal tension glaucoma, you may <coughs> want to tie it looser. Because his pressure was in the high 30s, we went ahead and put in two releasables. So I can cut one early on, and then I can cut one later on to stepwise lower the intraocular pressure, all at which time the back flow, is, uh, the back sutures are fairly loose, and there is adequate flow out the back immediately. So the front is tight, the back is loose. Now it's time to close the wound, and because I use mitomycin C all the time in these procedures, it's imperative that you have a watertight seal. The 10 nylon places two bites, first at the limbus through the conjunctiva, and then goes underneath the edge of the conjunctiva in small little bites. It is imperative that you don't include the edge of the conjunctiva in your, uh, in your closure because then you will form a real purse string. By doing so just under the edge of the conjunctiva, the wound will implode and it will be 100% watertight and you will not have any problems. In addition, the knot will bury itself. 
So here we are pulling up, and this is, you see, all the suture disappearing and the uh, wound coming together quite nicely. Now, because we're near the old bleb, I don't want a dell to form, so we decided to put in one extra suture so that there's a, uh, an even plane for the tear film and there will not be a dell formation between the old surgery and the new. Notice we only have about two and a half clock hours that we're using, which is why this uh, particular surgery is so nice in either the temporal or the nasal direction because all you need is a small, clock a, a small amount of mobile conjunctiva. We also cut the releasable sutures when we see exactly where the uh, fornix base flap will reside. We reform the anterior chamber with balanced salt. A nice bleb is formed, and it's important that you test that it is watertight. You do so first with a wet cell sponge, and if you're very compulsive, you could just take a fluorescein and see how it goes.